What's the word, y'all? This is KCR underscore podcast, another Rose podcast. It is another day on a Tuesday. How are y'all doing today? Y'all are now tuned in with Cinco, Big Harvin, j himself. What's the word with y'all, man? How are y'all living? Another beautiful day, my guy. That's right. That's yeah, right. Man, survived it. Survived it. So, yeah. Good day. <laughs> that, that is correct. Survived it. Yeah. <laughs> that's all that matters. We are here. And we since are we here. are here. And since we are here, a lot, a lot, a lot has been going on since our last episode, and especially this past weekend with all the festivities that's been going on from SmackDown to uh, NXT TakeOver 30. We had uh, AEW Dynamite on the weekend as well at the same time, same day. Sorry about the delay from the NBA playoffs. All the rest of the community was pissed off by that. Hell <laughs> pissed it off. It is what it is, buddy. <laughs> Followed by SummerSlam on Sunday, and we capped off with Monday Night Raw. Yeah. But, you know, going to all the, all the experience and stuff like that, you know, with the WWE, they're, uh, they're taking the approach to trying to get the fans more interactive with um, their shows to help out. So they took, like, the NBA approach with having virtual fans at their shows, at their live events, at their new Thunderdome, which is at um, – was it? Don't call me the Amway Center in Florida, something like that. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, yeah the Amway Center. Yeah. So with that, they started that on Friday with uh, SmackDown. Then mm-hmm. they carried it over to SummerSlam, and they had their first uh, live virtual fans on Raw. And your host, your favorite co-host, your host's favorite host, mm-hmm. Cinco, <laughs> was able to attend the Thunderdome live virtually. And I'm just going to give like a brief, you no know, in-depth insight about that. I'm not going to lie to you. When it first started off, I almost got pissed. I, I, I really almost got pissed off because thing about we, when you register and you, and you get accepted into it, you get a link in your, um in your email about a certain call time that you have to get in. So, I wasn't there for the whole show. They gave me an hour. So I feel like they gave people hours from a block from like seven, mm. uh, like I'm off of central time, seven to eight, eight to nine, nine to 10. I had the last hour from nine to 10. Okay. Getting ready for it. No, getting dressed, getting my street proper shirt on, straddle street poppers, get my <laughs> chain, get my bandana. So people could find me on TV just in case. And so I get ready. Nine o'clock hits. I click the link to get mm-hmm. in. It says, sorry, the, Thund- the Thunderdome is full. And, boy, I was oh. about to flip. <laughs> oh. Ooh, man, I tell you, when I – when I piss oh, is an understatement. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> wow. So I got accepted into registering the Thunderdome, but when it's time for my call for the Thunderdome, I can't get in. So I'm, I'm sitting at my, my computer in front of my TV and stuff, just like, man, like, really? Really? And I just kept trying to refresh it, refresh it, and nothing was working. I was like, wow, you know what? I'm gonna quit. But since I'm not a quitter, I I I, <laughs> I, I was a little I was a little bit more patient, you know. And I waited till about like 908, something like that. I'm like, okay, we're gonna try this again one more time. I clicked it, refresh it, and it finally worked. And I got in the Thunderdome with the last 52 minutes left of WWE Raw. And with that, you no, know, I was just they had my little picture on the side of the screen, I was just watching. And there's somebody on there that tells you when to clap, when to boo, uh, give you reactions, uh, knows when you're on commercial, so you don't have to be interactive at the time. Yeah, so it, it, it's wow. it's different. It's a little fun. Um, so it was it was an okay experience. One thing I would say that I w- wish they would approve on is letting you know where exactly you are in the Thunderdome, like your section, so it can help find you in it if you're not on – the TV side, the main area of you no, know, where they show the fans like at the front barricade and stuff like that, because you know it wraps around halfway. And so, just to help right. people out find exactly where you are, I wish they had that like somewhere on your screen, like, oh, this is your location in the Thunderdome. But I would say my experience was it was good. It, it, it could have been better if I got in at nine o'clock, but that's that's another story. But anyway. Enough of that. Do y'all have anything y'all want to say about that? He looked down. He looked down when he said it was good, so that means he was lying. But <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go off over it. It doesn't Man. sound like it's a very good experience. Because I, 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 Vince, I, Vince would have to see me himself. All right, over my <laughs> link, bro. Vince I, I was see me. I was pissed because I didn't see myself on TV, but I gotta go back and look yeah. at it again, see if I can catch yeah. it because I'm doing two things at once. 
Man, I, I'll be ignorant as hell. They sitting here tell me when Randy Orton comes out to boo, I'm going to cheer out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They said, <laughs> tell me to boo they said those <laughs> thumbs, I was like, let's go. <laughs> <Randy>. <laughs> what are they going to do, eject you from the Zoom wrestling meeting? <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> With all the negative stuff that's been going on with Zoom and people that are staying on, but that's another story. We'll get in that too probably another time. But anyway, <laughs> moving on, let's get started with the show, y'all, with KTR underscore podcast. First off, this is a topic that my co-host really wanted to touch on and really want to speak about, and that is with the women's tag team division and their titles. So mm-hmm. apparently... <laughs> <laughs> apparently with that it's, it, it seems maybe a bit lackluster a um, bit not up to par where it should be and let, you know I'm, I'm just going to let them touch on it real quick on, on their, their opinion on the, the women tag team titles so big hard we're going to let you go big first Here we go. what you think about the women tag team titles being <laughs> Possibly irrelevant, or possibly irrelevant. The women's titles or the women's tag titles. The women's tag titles. They are irrelevant. There's no <laughs> women's tag division. There are no actual tag teams. But Bailey and Sasha, which we see is what's about to happen with them, since they're uniting uh, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax, basically to take the straps off of them so they can have their little program against each other. Like, there's what 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 other tag teams are there? They have to makeshift these teams. There are no teams. Well, we, we got no high division. comics. We, we, know, we got Billy Kay. You know, that's my favorite. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Damn, there has only been That's not four. a division. <laughs> that's not. In the last two years they've been here, there's only been four. Four different women's tag team champions. And most of them were just carrying the championship like luck. They cause. haven't even yeah. regularly is, defending them. Is it because there's – because uh, the the women's division is is dense in numbers, or because the the factions that are set with the tag no. teams is not is not good enough. They they haven't put the time into the actual division. There has been no time actually put into the women's tag team division. They brought the titles out seemingly just to have a women's tag team, to, just to say that they have tag team titles. I love women's wrestling. All right, it's not a knock on women's wrestling. It's not a knock on the athletes there, but. They're not even defending them, man. Like it's 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 pointless. There is really no, there's no prestige to them. There's no prestige being built because there are no real teams. Like like you said, there's been four four separate champions. Um, this the the current champions are about to break up. Mm-hmm. The new champions are going to be um just thrown together. Sure. Half of one of the tag team um champion holders already left. Kyrie Sane left. She had the title yeah. for a while. Like it's there there is no prestige to these titles. And that's WWE's fault. They should have put these teams together when they came with the titles and actually built them as teams. They didn't do that with 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 the women's tag team division. Now I work sometimes with with the men, um like how we was talking about, we joked about around a couple episodes ago with uh, Cesaro. If you tag with Cesaro, you're going to get a tag strap. You know, they throw him with people. They throw him with people, but they make them actual teams. They work together. They have all these tandem moves. They they, they make it work. They don't do that with, with the women. They do not put the work in to make it a legit division. It's just a pointless division right now. Yeah, anything to follow up with that, Jay Bo? You know, to piggyback off Big Harm. Yeah, like to piggyback off that, it's sort of like – where uh, the people have been asking for the tag team titles for a while. So then creative, they was like, all right, shoot, let's finally give them the tag team titles. But then when Sasha Banks and Bailey held the belts, they like looked at their product and said, shoot, now we got to focus on women's singles division and women's tag team division. Oh, shoot. I didn't know we had to put that much effort into it. Well, maybe if we just, you know, have them prance around, show them from time to time, maybe the fans would just forget the fact that they actually have to defend the belts to be relevant. Right. Yep. Uh, yep. But uh, there's no focus. No focus in tag team division. There's no reason, point, prestige, or overall purpose for the women's tag team titles. Yeah, like Cinco said about them having a dense women's locker room, that's kind of why they should have a thriving tag division. They just yeah. won't put the time into it. Like, they have enough people there. They have enough people not being used, being used singing contests, you mm-hmm. know, doing crap that could actually be 
put together, work together for a good long time, finally be associated with each other, and then actually make something happen as a tag team. They're not doing that, so they need to get rid of the titles. The titles and are pointless. It's, and it's not they're like not willing they to put have, the time in. It's pointless. And it's not like they don't have time. Monday Night Raw has three hours. Three hours, man. <laughs> got three hours. You got time to focus on the women's. Then they had them. Uh, then they have them uh, defendable on NXT too. Like you, you have. Yeah, they did that for Come me. On, man. Y'all, y'all not, y'all not doing. Y'all not doing. You're not trying. Not trying. It's the one. It's the one not belt trying. other than the 24/7 title that can like legitimately defend it across three brands. Everywhere. But Everywhere, it's the man. Least focused belt. So that that makes no sense to me. Yeah, it's pointless. I don't like it. All right, Get rid so- of it. So with that, so you say get rid of it. Well, you yeah. know, it, it, like I said, it's the beginning of everything. It's it just started, so maybe it'll improve over time, maybe not, but we'll see. But at the end of the day, right now with the women's tag team styles, it is not doing its job or serving a purpose right now within the WWE. And speaking of the WWE, WWE rhymes with the word Lee. Lee is the last name of a person named Keith, and that man is Keith Lee. The bass game is glory, and man, let 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 me tell you about the weekend. Bars. The yes, bars. I, I can rap. But anyway, let me, <laughs> let me tell you about the limitless one. About the weekend he had, main event NXT Takeover Thirty, dropped the title to Karrion Cross, unfortunately. And with that, it was a bunch. It was really a bunch of mixed emotions about it because Keith Lee is currently the shortest reigning NXT champion in history right now, for just receiving the title and now losing it. But with that, on SummerSlam, everybody was caught by surprise, saying that he was going to be debuting on Monday Night Raw. He came to Monday Night Raw against our hometown hero. Randall Keith Orton. You see, you know, they both got the word Keith in their name. Keith must <laughs> uh, right. be a hell of a name. But anyway. All right now. Yes. <laughs> so with that, he made his debut with that in a different fashion, you know, attire wise and ring music wise and everything. So <laughs> We're we're not a fan of this new theme. theme. Oh, I'm man. sorry. Please yeah. go back to the old Bask in Your Glory NXT, not the remix version. But anyway, moving on from that, what do you – from that whole weekend, how do you feel? First, you're first going to start off with um, – no, wait, what's going on? How, how do you feel about the whole Keith Lee weekend? Like, what's your opinion on it? Do you think that he got moved up too soon to the main, uh, to the main roster or you think he should stay for a minute before it happened? That's the question. <laughs> All right, I I got a lot to say about that. So, Speak. Jr., do you, how much? No, you take that, brother. Speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go take ahead. that, brother. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My hands at oh, Fun yeah. fact oh, about uh, Karrion yeah. Cross for both of y'all. Fun fact about Mr. Karrion Cross is that he debuted uh, six years ago. The brother's thirty-five. Yeah. Um, he he was like twenty-nine when he debuted my, my my wrestling brothers. So you know, y'all got y'all got time. Yeah. Hey. Now he's NXT thank champion. You think about it. Person. But he's currently think about it. That, that, we hope for a right there. <laughs> All right. So there's there's layers to this whole thing. So uh, Cinco, you said is it too early for Keith Lee to go up? I don't think that's the problem. It, it the problem is not him moving up too early. The the problem is how he was quickly transitioned as world champion in an NXT. Like he had a great North American title run, in my opinion. He had a great feud with uh, uh, Dijakovic. He had a great match with Roger Strong for the belt. I mean, he is a real good definitive champion. Don't then he Adam Cole. Went on. Adam Cole. Oh, I'm sorry. And, and Adam Cole. There well. you I go. Mean, <laughs> like, that per- perfect example. Like he's been doing great as champion. But then I'm pretty sure creative was like, we want Keith Lee. We want him. And then Triple H probably looked at it like, well, shoot, he's like one of the hardest workers we have here in NXT. There's no way I'm just going to give him over to the main roster without giving him something to really stand off on. So they're like, okay, let's give him the world title. Perfect. NXT, unified both belts, great. And then a few weeks later, he loses it. What the heck? My thing with Karrion Cross is, don't get me wrong, I like the guy, but for somebody who just came into NXT to beat somebody as established as Keith Lee so quickly, and Keith Lee didn't even get the opportunity for a rematch and just push him over to Raw, you just rushed 
rush the greatness that is Keith Lee. Then, oh my God, when I watched Raw and they put his butt on there and they gave him the SmackDown <laughs> versus Raw creative character theme music, I was sick <laughs> off. But then it got me thinking, I'm like, they did that a lot. Remember back when Big E was Big E Langs at NXT and he had the five count theme song? Yes. That was a dope theme song. But then he came over to the WWE, they took away Langston, and they gave him some generic theme song. Like, they're doing that with these guys. It's like they don't want them to look dominant coming in. And I'm not understanding why. And then the ring attire was just, the, the music and the ring attire just does not fit Lee at all. Like, there's nothing glory about it. So that how they worked it up was wrong. They should have gave him more time as a world champion. Keep the theme song, because... Sam should know he's an entertainment guy. Like the music, the thing, all that is a part of the whole package. Yeah. The second you take that away, you automatically cut half of their credibility. And that is not fair to Keith Lee at all. Big yeah, home. that's what I think. Yeah, man, I agree with mostly what you said. Um, the only real difference between uh, Big E and Keith Lee is that they did actually position Keith Lee as a uh, main eventer of sorts, having him come out against um orton randy orton there at the end Facebook. yeah <laughs> randy uh whatever uh yeah against, against that guy from st louis the hazelwood guy here uh, <laughs> so with biggie biggie was brought in as a bodyguard you know what i'm saying he wasn't really brought in to he wasn't positioned in that way so it was kind of like they didn't know what they were going to do with him it seems like they know what they're going to do with keith lee but i absolutely agree they screwed him as far as the attire and the theme music it's it's terrible, man. They that's his whole that's half of his identity, like you said. They just they flipped it. Like if that was a live crowd, and uh, we know that the live crowd doesn't always have a lot of people that watch NXT, and he came out with that crap, they would have just been scratching their heads, man. Like who? Yeah. Who is this guy? Like, who's this know? jobber that just came in? You know, to yeah. go or like, oh man. It's and his build was his build was one of the best in NXT because it wasn't forced, it wasn't rushed, it was organic. It was went organic. Paces. Yes. Yeah, he went the paces. He faced everybody he really needed to face. He he gradually grew, and he deserved the title. I have no idea why they would give it to somebody like uh, Karrion Cross. Not you know knocking him, but like we keep talking about, he's brand new. Basically, they have people that are more deserving. Um, he could have really lost to Adam Cole again. Oh, he, if, you know, agree. Cole wasn't wasn't already engaged in a few, but you know, somebody more established would have made more sense. I really don't know what they were thinking with this whole move. Um, yeah. Definitely too early for Raw, not because he can't handle it, but because of how they ended him in NXT. How they ended him. Key, right. That's yeah. good. Right. They're doing stuff like this because they don't have a crowd. Like, the NXT crowd would probably riot over losing Keith Lee like uh -huh. that. They, they wouldn't they wouldn't sit well if people were actually sitting in seats, you know. But it is what it is. I think he'll do fine. I think they do need to rewind and at least give him the music back. At the yeah. very least, give least. him that music yes. back. The very least. Please. Everything else we can work with. But please, yeah. please, please. Big Gucky botch. W Big time botch. Creative. Give Keith Lee his music back. Y'all can keep the clothes. I don't care. We still going to look at him as the same person. Make it work. Yep. We can make that give, work. Give him his music. Give him his music. And it's funny that um, Big Harv, he mentioned about uh, – Mr. Adam Cole, because Adam Cole had himself um, an entertaining match this past weekend against um, Pat McAfee, former opponent for the Indianapolis Colts. And, you know, usually SummerSlam, there's always somebody famous that comes in and makes their little, you know, debut in the ring for just entertainment purposes, just big name purposes, ticket, ticket selling purposes, you know, entertainment things. You know, that's why I like. So he had his he had his shine on uh, SummerSlam weekend with Takeover Thirty. Also with that, somebody else made their in ring debut, which is um, Ray Mysterio's son. Have no idea why mm -hmm. he he was there, and so they both had themselves some matches against a very prominent athletes from the WWE. Pat McAfee went against the, mm -hmm. the undisputed era himself, Adam Cole, baby, and. Ray Mysterio's son, um, yeah, Dominic, went against the Monday Night Messiah. Dominic Mysterio, oh. man. <laughs> Just crapping on him. Ray no Mysterio's son, that's his name, went against the Monday, Monday Night Messiah, Seth Rollins. 
So between those two matches, who had the better in-ring debut, Pat McAfee or Rey Mysterio's son? <laughs> don't, don't lie. Do not lie. You know what? I'm gonna go first on this. Pat McAfee was oh, great. Man. That y'all do not sleep on NFL punters because Pat McAfee is one hell of an athlete. Shout out to Pat McAfee at the Pat McAfee show. That's just where that. But anyway, I said that for very single. Yeah, but anyway, like I said, Pat McAfee, hell of an athlete, doing all his acrobatics, doing super suplexes off the top rope, doing somersaults. From inside the ring, outside the ring, on a, a group of people doing these locks and stuff, and he he did good. You know, he he he's acrobatic in the ring. He could definitely take a good bump. Uh, selling was okay, but yeah, overall, I feel like he did better than Dominic. You know why? Because he did not have to use a weapon to help him out in the match. But that's my opinion. So, big hall, Mr. Mr. Entertainment, Mr. Entertainment, Entertainment over right. in ring. <laughs> Prowess is upset that there were objects used for the entertainment of the people in order to enhance the match. That is interesting. But my take, um, I, I agree. I absolutely agree. Um, um, Pat McAfee, he, he blew me away. I wasn't ready for him. You know, I asked y'all who he was when you told me about the, I, I didn't know. I don't know what to do this. But um, he has a bright future if he wants it with, with uh, WWE. Like, he. He showed that he has he has actual skills. He has some chops in the ring. Uh, I can say the same for Dominic though. I'm not going to uh, crap on him like like Sam is. It wasn't mm-hmm. wasn't bad at all. Um, it did mm-hmm. what it needed to do to establish him as um, Ray Mysterio's son, but Prince Mysterio. That's what he's doing. You know, going forward, he's still he's young. He's 23. He's only going to get better. He it wasn't bad at all. But uh, McAfee was definitely. He he looked he looked at home, man. He looked when at I was twenty three. I looked better than Mysterio on the ring. But that's another story. All right, that's cool. Uh, all oh, right, how you feel about all it? Right. Who you think? All right, now now you know I got something to say to you, Singh. Speak. Go, Go ahead. I'm waiting. All for right. You, so y'all. first off, let, to answer the initial question, who I thought was better, Pat McAfee or uh, Pat McAfee? McAfee. My apologies. Pat, uh, <laughs> yeah, him or uh, Dominic Mysterio. Yeah, Pat definitely was the better match, but. To me, it was better, not just because of the wrestling ability, but because Dominic, he has a wrestling lineage. So he already has something to live up to. Pat, he didn't. Like, he just came in, like, as this former football guy into wrestling. So that alone just impressed me far beyond what I expected. But I'm not going to let you sit here and take a dump on <laughs> Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> let me tell you something about Dominic Mysterio. That match was emotional and I loved it. Every last bit of it. But you can sit here and talk about how, oh, well, he lost. Who cares? Let me tell you, Seth Rollins had to get help to beat Dominic. Let me say that again. Seth Rollins had to get help from Murphy to beat Dominic. You mean to tell me the guy who has multiple world titles, former United States champion, mm. former Intercontinental champion, multiple mm. time tag team champion, he mm. beat Brock Lesnar by himself at WrestleMania, Royal mm. Rumble winner, he had to mm. get help from Buddy Murphy to beat Dominic Mysterio. And then, and Ooh. then Ray didn't even get involved until Buddy Murphy, oh, I'm sorry, Murphy got in front. And then he had to handcuff Mysterio, and he had to threaten his mother just to beat <laughs> Dominic. So you can crap on him all you want, but Ooh. Dominic gave him a run for his money. <laughs> Don't forget, Ooh. Dominic got a bright future. So uh, I, I, I just realized where you said drop. lineage, right? Pipe bomb. <laughs> I remember where you said you were talking about lineage, right? That's right. With, with Dominic and Ray Mysterio. That's right. You know who Dominic reminds me of? Who he reminds you of? Michael Jordan's sons. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Disrespectful. Yeah. He you know hit what? that he hit that, that, he hit that Guerrero frog that, splash. That was that, that was ugly. That was, was very, that was the most disappointing part of the match. Everything with that frog splash. And, and you that know, really I, I agree ugly. with that. The frog splash and that daggone hood that he had on the ring. Like that bothered <laughs> the heck out of me. But with that, to be the mess green aside, with that mess aside, for that to be his first in-ring match with somebody like Seth Rollins, that was good, and I look forward to his future. He thought he was he thought he was the green arrow in there. <laughs> I thought it was somebody, but Seth it, Rollins, it, it you would have failed this city. 
<laughs> well, enough about That's that with, uh, with those with those two making their uh, in ring appearances. We had uh, another surprise that happened over this past weekend too: the arrival of the big dog, yes. Roman Reigns. Big dog, Roman. wreck everyone and leave. Remi- that reminds me of a song, but I can't say it on there because that song is way too explicit. But it's a rap song. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, with that being said, (laughs) Roman Reigns came in after the Fiend won the Universal title from Braun Strowman and just speared everybody in sight. How do you feel about this new Roman Reigns coming in? I like it. I'm all for it. I'm for it. I'm I'm all for it. Like, all three of us for years, we've been preaching about Roman Reigns going heel. And so this apparent heel turn, Freaking amazing. The only real thing I want to say that's freaking hilarious, I follow uh, Randy Orton on Instagram, and he's been dogging Roman Reigns, talking about his clean-cut white teeth. Boy, mm-hmm. that's the funniest thing I have ever seen. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, all shout-out to Roman Reigns. I'm, I'm loving what they're doing with him with him coming back. Big horror. Uh, I'm opposite of y'all. Not even opposite, I don't think. I don't, I don't see the difference between this and uh, any other return. Is it because he, he beat Bray Wyatt? No, he didn't beat anybody, actually. I'm saying, what, if, you, if you listen to what I'm saying, he just came in from, you know, a lengthy absence, hit his finisher on um, the champion and a contender and, you know, post. Like, that's what faces do. That's what heels do. I, all I'm saying is I don't know if it's a heel turn. I don't know if I chalk it up to that. It's always good to see Rome. Um, I'm glad he's back. He looks like he's still in good shape. You know, he looks hungry. He's like he's going to put on some good matches. I don't um, I'm. I don't know about – his health though is he still a cancer patient? Yeah, and um, COVID ain't slowed down. I don't I don't know if it's a good idea for him to be out there. Right. Anybody could be exposed at any moment, and that could really affect him yeah. worse than you know some other people. So, but putting that aside, um, I'm all for seeing him come back. I would love to see an actual heel turn where he does some actual heel stuff. I'm all for him going heel. I just don't feel like this is what that was. I feel me that. personally. I don't I don't think it was a heel turn. I think it was just him coming back. Taking his claim, saying he's coming straight for the title. I understand. Well, he got his match a payback in a triple threat match against the Fiend and the Monster. Well, with they finna, that, they finna do my dog wrong again. That's perfectly <laughs> fine. Yeah, I'm all for it. <laughs> and with that being said, that is almost all the time we have, and that means we're about to go into our lightning round. We have to make this lightning round fast because we don't have that much time left. So, with that being <laughs> said. It's a this game is called this or that. Not really this or that, but basically who would you erase from WWE history or okay. wrestling history at that? It's the game that you sent me a while back, J Bo. Okay. You asked me about and now it was them three options. But yeah, it's basically who would you choose to erase from history? I'm gonna give you two options, you gotta pick one. First, who would you erase? Shawn Michaels or Undertaker? What the <laughs> yeah. hell? Exactly. <laughs> yep. Uh, that deal. I don't know if I could slap you through the Zoom, I would. <laughs> yeah, disrespect. You made my chest hurt. <laughs> um, out of respect for the game, um, obviously I couldn't pick neither one because I have a, a no, personal no. loving for both of them. But but if I just had to pick one, I'll get rid of Sean because I grew up more with the Undertaker than Sean, in my opinion. That's just me and my life. Big hole. I know it's a hard one. <laughs> Big hole. Uh, it's lightning round. I, 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 I gotta say, I gotta, I gotta say, Sean, because he was he was gone for all that time that he was gone, and uh, Undertaker was still there. Undertaker's legacy stretched longer. Yeah, um, yeah, out of technicality, I guess. I, I'm sorry, right. DK. Next up, <laughs> sorry. Next up, The I Rock or that. John Cena? John Cena, get him out of here. Cena, easy, easy, easy. get him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Trish Stratus or Lita? Uh, I'll get rid of Lita. I, I, I like Trish Stratus' work more. Big yeah. I'm going to get rid of Trish for basically the same reasons I got rid of Sean. Uh, Lita was there and had an impact for longer. Okay. You know, even, if, even though it was as a manager in the later time, but um, she, was, she was still there making them headlines, having sex in the ring, you know. Next up, <laughs> Stone Cold Steve Austin or Ric Flair? Ric Flair, get him out of there. Get him out yeah, of there. Yeah, get rid of Rick. Yeah, grew up with Stone Cold. Ain't, ain't nothing like him. Yeah, Stone yeah. Cold, easy. Okay, got another one for y'all. Ron Simmons or Kofi Kingston? 
Okay, I'm only going to say get rid of Ron because I actually grew up with Kofi. <laughs> that's that's the only reason why. I like I've actually seen Kofi debut and I've seen him throughout his career. That's the only reason why I say Kofi. Oh, I'm I'm gonna get rid of Kofi with a heavy heart <laughs> because Ron Simmons was actually beating ass backstage. He was jumping on folks and and wearing them out like he was a locker room leader back when being a locker room leader meant whooping ass in the locker room. Oh, I'm not supposed to be cursing my bad. Uh, it's too late so, now. <laughs> yeah, it is. Damn. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna keep Ryan and get rid of Kofi because Ryan, Ryan, put them paws on you. All right, Jazz or Jacqueline? Oh, get rid of Jacqueline. Get rid of Jacqueline. Oh, shoot. Not, that to me, that's not even a question. Jazz or Jacqueline? Get rid of Jazz. Jazz didn't. Jazz didn't do as much. Uh, she didn't. She didn't really last there as long as as she should. She's a better athlete, a better wrestler. It. Next, I mean, she didn't really do much. Lesnar or Goldberg? Goldberg, get him out of there. Yeah, get rid of Goldberg. Get him Mark out of there. A whole lot more wrestling crash. Okay. Paul Heyman or Jr. Jim Ross? Yeah. Hey, Jim Ross commented a lot of great shows. Man, it's bad. <laughs> okay, but. I, you gotta look Paul at Paul Heyman it. put it put them together exactly right. That, Paul Heyman put the matches together. That's why I did that. Right. I know. Heyman, uh, Heyman the Rock. Dang man, come uh, on! Uh, I'm just ticking right I now. Suicide. I choose suicide. I'm done. Uh, I'll I'll say keep myself. Paul. Keep Paul. Keep Paul. All right. Keep Paul. Paul. Who you mm-hmm. pick? I'm gonna keep Jr. Since he keeping Paul, so we can keep them both. There it All is. right. <laughs> this is uh my last one. AJ Styles or Bray Wyatt? Oh, get rid of Bray. Get rid of Bray. AJ Styles, get him out of there. I, I knew he was gonna say that. Betray the yeah. patriarch. I won't do it. I won't do it. <laughs> I won't do it. I knew he was gonna do it. I love my father. I love my father. <laughs> I won't forsake him. Well, like that, that is the end of the lightning round, and that is all the time we have. Be sure to follow us on all social media platforms at KTR underscore podcast on Twitter and Instagram. Follow us on Facebook at Another Rose Podcast. Follow us on YouTube at Another Rose Podcast. Follow us on all podcast platforms. You know, we got Google Podcasts, Spotify. Apple Podcasts, you name it, Anchor. We got all of it at Know the Roast Podcast. This is Know the Roast Podcast, hashtag KTR. We are in the building. You are now tuned in with Single Big Harvin, J Bo himself, and we are out. Yeah. Said I'm about to bring it back to the block. Like my pocket holds a packet full of rocks, and I'm packing me a clock. And my quick is the most hazardous of flocks that you couldn't count. A steady counting numbers from the raggedy scouts to the pacifistic route. If you're fearing the outcome, bullets burn bitches better warn I like Malcolm. X out your